In this video, we are going to discuss 3D scanning aircraft, specifically airplanes and helicopters. And what we're going to go through is uh, some different subjects, including why someone would want to 3D scan an aircraft. We'll talk about the different applications uh, that it would be used in. Uh, we'll talk about the different aircraft types and sizes. We'll talk about the actual process of how it's done. And we'll look at some of the typical equipment used for 3D scanning of airplanes and helicopters. We'll look at the deliverable. What is the uh, end result, the end deliverable to the customer? And we'll go over some ideas of cost ranges, uh, depending on different variables. And then finally, how to select a provider to do some 3D scanning, uh, maybe modeling or inspection from that scan data. So let's start by talking about why would somebody want to 3D scan an aircraft? Uh, and there's a few uh, common reasons that this is done. Uh, one of the most common is there is no CAD, no 3D data uh, available. And that's usually because of the age of the aircraft, uh, when it was designed and manufactured, they just didn't use CAD uh, back then. They either didn't have it or just didn't use it. Um, or uh, another common one is you don't have access to the CAD. So there may be CAD available, um, but you just do not have access to it. Um, a third reason would be there is CAD data available, but it's not correct. So what happens many times uh, through the years as planes get updated, retrofitted, changed, um, and it's not updated in the CAD. So even though there is CAD, it could be uh, out of date or the aircraft has a different interior in it. Many different reasons. So the CAD data isn't correct. Another reason is, depending on what you're doing, the CAD may be too complex. Um, most current aircraft are completely designed in 3D CAD. But those files are huge because they're huge assemblies with thousands and thousands of parts. And maybe you just need the exterior or maybe just parts of the cockpit. Um, trying to simplify uh, the, the CAD down to something that's usable um, just may not be possible or just too difficult to do. Uh, and the, the other reason people scan aircraft is they want to do inspection. So... Most of these I'd mentioned already are usually for reverse engineering where you want to build CAD. Uh, but nowadays, um, with the uh, accuracy of these 3D scanners and the resolution, people are actually using them to do inspection. So they would scan either the whole aircraft or parts of the aircraft. Then they would import CAD data and actually do inspection and measure and, and see the difference of the as-built versus the nominal, which was the, the CAD. So those are some of the main reasons people uh, uh, want to 3D scan um, aircraft. Now, what are some of the applications um, that they want to use this scan data for? And uh, here are a few of the most common ones that we see out there. Um, one of the most common ones is they want to build a physical trainer or simulator. So a flight simulator, a maintenance simulator, um, you know, something like that. They're going to physically build it. Um, or they might be building a virtual trainer, a simulator, you know, so more of a software-based uh, system um, might be the first step before they get into the actual physical trainer. Um, so being able to uh, use a virtual trainer. Um, they might be updating or retrofitting the aircraft. Um, so many times aircraft are put into service, especially military aircraft, for a specific task. Uh, and then later on in that aircraft's life, they may reconfigure it, um, take things out, add things on, um, put new uh, engines uh, that may require different supports and um, just different things. So it's some kind of upgrade. Another thing is they might be doing some kind of analysis uh, to the aircraft. This is software analysis, such as CFD, FEA, structural, things like that. Um, and that could be in conjunction with retrofitting an aircraft. So for example, they might be adding stuff to the outside of the aircraft, 
different sensors, cameras, uh, uh, military weapons, things like that. And then they want to run some analysis to see how that's going to affect the flight of the aircraft or the structural integrity of the aircraft. Um, so we will go and scan that aircraft with those things added on. Um, they might be just analyzing an existing aircraft. They basically want to digitally document it uh, to go in and study it or do different things with it. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, inspection. Inspection is becoming used a lot. So, so to either 3D scan individual items uh, or the whole aircraft and do inspection, basically you know, digital measurements to see if, if things have been manufactured correctly. Now, what are the, some of the aircraft types we see out there? Uh, well, obviously airplanes uh, of all shapes and all sizes, uh, from small uh, private airplanes all the way up to huge, you know, uh, your C-5s, your C-130s, your C-17s, you know, very large uh, military transport aircraft, um, helicopters, wide variety of size uh, and shapes of helicopters, uh, unmanned uh, uh, aircraft as well. And again, they can be very small, they can be very large uh, and, and all points in between. Um, sometimes just the exterior needs to be scanned. Uh, sometimes the interior, sometimes both, uh, or uh, just individual parts that they want to have scanned on the aircraft. Now, how is an aircraft actually 3D scanned? What does that process look like? Well, the first thing you need to do is look at many different factors that come into play um, when you're looking at having something 3D scanned. Uh, first one really is size. Um, you know, the bigger the aircraft, uh, the more complicated it gets, the more equipment, the more people, um, the more ancillary equipment uh, might be required uh, to do any 3D scanning. In addition, location becomes important. How far away is it uh, geographically? Is the aircraft stored inside a hangar that's climate controlled? Or is it outside, uh, you know, on a tarmac um, where it could be snowing or raining and just temperature changes through the day um, could affect accuracy, it can affect equipment. So that's important. And then what areas are going to be scanned? Is it just the interior? Are you doing just the cockpit, um, the cargo area? Is the plane uh, stripped out? Um, meaning, you know, all the frames and stringers and, and are exposed and the floors removed. Are you doing all the structural stuff or is it a completely finished um, cabin with seats in it? Um, things like that. And then um, are you doing some individual parts as well? And then what level of detail and accuracy? And this is the a really important one. Are they looking for a, what we call a high fidelity model that has, you know, every button and switch and dial and cable? Um, or is it just a, a model that represents all the uh, all the structural items uh, in the airplane? Uh, for example, if you were going to build a physical trainer, you may just need all the structural stuff so that can be fabricated. Um, and accuracy. Accuracy gets difficult to hold over distance. So if you're doing a very large aircraft and you're trying to hold uh, a, a fairly tight tolerance, um, that's going to be difficult. Uh, more equipment or maybe different equipment and different processes um, to be able to do that and do it accurately. Um, so doing a very high detail scan and a very accurate model can be uh, twice the uh, time to scan and could be, you know, more expensive, um, maybe require more people, etc. So those are some of the factors uh, that are typically looked at when um, you want to look at 3D scanning any type of aircraft. Now, what about equipment? What type of equipment is used when you do, do any kind of 3D scanning of aircraft? Um, and the answer is usually, well, it depends. If, thinking back to that last slide, um, how big is the aircraft? Is it a high detail scan? Are we going in and getting into a very tight cockpit or uh, you know a cargo area, or up into a landing gear um, uh, housing, or something like that. So there's a lot of different equipment that can be used. The typical typical equipment uh, is what's called a laser tracker, uh, a long range scanner, uh, some handheld scanning equipment, 
Sometimes photogrammetry equipment is used, um, and you're going to typically use some very high-end laptops and or desktop computers. If you're doing a large aircraft at high detail, um, it's not uncommon for us to get, you know, 100 gigs or more of data and process that into a point cloud file that's three to 400 million points. So these are very, very large files. Um, and also specialized software. Uh, this is not done with, with CAD software, typical CAD software uh, that you see out on the market. It's very specific software for scanning, reverse engineering, and inspection. So you really have to have that. And on top of all of that, it's really the knowledge to use all this different kind of equipment in the right way uh, to do the job properly. Now, what is the deliverable? What is it that the customer requires? Well, that all depends. Um, and there's a few different levels. So at the very, I would say, basic level uh, would be to deliver 3D scan data. And that data is going to be in either point cloud or polygon format. And basically, point cloud is just as it sounds. It's points. It's individual XYZ points. Um, now, when you scan any kind of aircraft, you're going to take dozens to hundreds of scans because all scanners are line of sight. So you're going to take lots of scans from different orientations and basically merge or put those all, align them all, put them all together and typically merge them into one file. So again, that can be delivered into a point cloud or a polygon file. Now, those files are not CAD files. They're not usable in CAD systems. You typically can't even import them in CAD systems. So unless you have specialized software uh, and know how to work with scan data, um, most people don't uh, or can't work with just the scan data. Um, what they may need is more of a, a CAD, well, they need a CAD model. And there's a few different levels of fidelity in a CAD model. So, for example, sometimes you just need a very simple model. Um, and that's done sometimes for like the analysis I talked about, where you're doing flow analysis or structural analysis. They want a very simple model of the inside or the outside uh, of the aircraft. Um, then you start getting into a more detailed CAD model. And this is where you get into a very detailed conversation with the customer, a very detailed scope of work to really outline what needs to be CAD modeled because it's not a push button. You don't take the scan data, push a button, and get CAD data. Every single item is modeled just like it's done in a CAD system. The only difference is, is we have the scan data to work from as reference, but we're still cutting sections, creating sketches, and then doing extrudes and lofts and cuts and, and all the normal CAD things you would do. So the more detail, the more time. So some people just need a very simple model with some basic structural information or specific information they're looking for, all the way up to a very highly detailed or what we call high fidelity model. That could be every button, every switch, every dial, every wire, every piece of conduit, all the way to every hole in every frame, every stringer um, uh, in that model. Um, uh, you know, every nut, every bolt. So um, as you go up uh, in this complexity, the price will go up and it can go up considerably. So it's usually a balance of, you know, what the customer needs uh, versus what their budget is. And again, this is a very detailed conversation. Um, sometimes it's actually walking the aircraft and looking at it and taking notes and understanding um, what needs to be modeled and then a very in-depth scope of work put together um, because the goal is to set the expectations so the customer gets what they want and the provider um, is you know providing what you know what they uh, what they should provide. So those are your different deliverables and again it really requires an in-depth understanding of the customer's needs and they understand what they're going to receive. Now, let's talk about cost um, and what drives the cost. And we'll get into some general ideas of cost, but um, that can be a very hard one to put an actual number on. Uh, but location, uh, where is the aircraft located? Is it uh, in another country? Is it in a remote location? How easy is it to get to? Typically, we're sending 
one, two, three, four engineers. We're sending lots of equipment. So we've got cases, tripods, jib arms, um, you know, computers, uh, uh, all kinds of targets and artifacts. So uh, depending on the project, we could be shipping um, 8, 10, 12, 15 cases full of equipment. So all of that adds up. So the number of scanners that are involved, the number of engineers, and then how many days on site. Um, the scanning is typically faster than the modeling, um, but you know generally it's going to be one day to one week uh, on site. Um, and uh, do we have a, a, a exclusive access to that aircraft? Uh, we've gotten into projects where we get there on site and they're doing maintenance on the aircraft and we don't get access to it. Or they're walking around in the plane and it and it's jiggling all around. Um, you know, we can't scan under those conditions. So um, how many days on site, uh, aircraft size, how large or small the aircraft is. Um, and then uh, once it's scanned, um, the data processing time. So scanning the aircraft may take a week. Processing the data, depending on how much data is collected, could be another week. It could be two weeks. It just depends. That's just taking all the raw scan data, cleaning it up, aligning it, and then merging it and maybe doing some further cleanup. Then after that, you have your CAD modeling, and this is what takes the most time. CAD modeling can take you know, anywhere from a few days uh, to months. It could be multiple engineers or it could be one engineer. Um, so it's really going to depend. And then fidelity and the accuracy. Uh, if there's higher accuracy requirements, that requires um, usually additional equipment, uh, usually different steps, uh, additional processes. Um, same with the fidelity. If the customer wants high fidelity, we have to scan at a higher uh, resolution. That makes the files bigger. That makes the scan time take longer. Um, that makes sure that you know uh, it's done very well while we're there. And then, of course, customer urgency. If this is a very important project and it needs to be done right away and uh, other projects need to be pushed off or rescheduled, that also drives costs. So giving a general idea of costs on the very simple end, um, you know, it could be uh, going in and maybe scanning a small cockpit and just delivering scan data could be in the, you know, thousands of dollars. Um, let's say sub $10,000 range. You get into a very large aircraft and very high fidelity. Um, you're going to get in the, you know, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the scope of work. And again, these larger projects are typically three to six months uh, of CAD modeling time, again, depending on the level of, of complexity. Um, most projects kind of in the medium fidelity, medium sized aircraft um, might be in the one to two to three month, uh, you know, uh, 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 time to to scan it, model it and, and give the data to the customer. So general idea of cost, it's very hard to pin it down. It, it, it always depends. And these are the main factors that drive the cost. Now, how do you select a provider? Because... Um, you know, if you go out on the internet and you do some searches, you you know you may see th different things. But how do you know who's who's somebody you want to work with? Well, one of the first things I would look at is their experience. Have they done this type of work before? Uh, we've run into many circumstances where people claim to have done this type of work, uh, and it didn't work out very well for the customer, and we've had to come back in and basically redo it um, because they don't have the right equipment. Um, they're not using 3D scanning technology specific for this type of work, which is typically, um, you know, very high end, very expensive 3D scanning equipment that's actually meant for this, meaning metrology grade scanning equipment. Uh, there's scanners out there that are more intended for, let's say, architecture and the GIS and the AEC market um, that don't have the resolution and accuracy to be scanning a cockpit of an airplane, um, what software they're using. Again, there is very specific software for mechanical reverse engineering and inspection. 
So you want to make sure they've done this type of work. Uh, you want to make sure they have the right equipment um, and get references. Get um, get them to give you uh, people you can talk to that have done similar projects to yours. And if they don't want to give them to you or they can't give them to you, um, then I would probably try to find somebody else because these projects are too complicated and you're going to spend way too much time and money uh, working with somebody that just you know, doesn't do this. Okay. So do your homework and make sure it's a reputable company that has experience. Um, and you know, those companies are not always going to be the cheapest. Um, you want to really look at the best value that maybe not the most expensive, maybe not the cheapest, but who's the best value? Um, you know, and what if, you know, um, are they providing you an in-depth scope of work? Uh, does it look like, you know, they've done attention to detail? Maybe ask them for uh, um, a scope of work from another customer. What kind of questions are they asking you right up front? Are they asking for detail? Do they want to look at pictures? Uh, do they want to go walk the aircraft? You know, are they asking you a lot of things? If they're not and they're just uh, throwing a price at you, uh, I would be very careful. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to what's the best value. And, um, you know, you'll have to determine that based on what your needs are. If you can get away with a low fidelity model that doesn't have to be very accurate, um, then, you know, maybe a lower cost provider is, is good for you. If you really need to have good quality, um, typically you're going to pay more for that. So make sure it's somebody that has the experience, the equipment, the references, um, and can, you know, and has that attention to detail. So just be careful. Uh, we've seen many people, um, unfortunately, just, I think, taken advantage of, and they don't really get what they need. Uh, we've gone in more times than I'd like to say and redone projects um, where we had to rescan it and everything because the scan data was just so bad we couldn't even use that. So um, that's our opinion of what you should look for in a provider. So here's some of our customers, not just in uh, the aerospace or military business, but just a general idea. And another thing you should look for, um, what does their portfolio of customers look like? Uh, is it companies you know? Is it companies you compete with or companies um, uh, in your industry? Uh, and for us, this is just a small list, but there's quite a few aircraft and simulation companies on here where we do a lot of work, a lot of aircraft scanning. Uh, and we can provide a lot of great references from the work we've done. So, uh, again, uh, take a close look at who you're working with and who they wor have worked with. So why would you specifically work with a company like EMS? Um, we've been doing this uh, for uh, 20 years, uh, over 20 years. Uh, we have a lot of experience and knowledge, uh, and that comes from really good people uh, who have done this Um we have really good equipment. We spend a lot of money to keep all of our scanning equipment up to date, calibrated, um, and ready to go. Um, we uh, really have a strong desire to understand what your needs are. We don't want to overcharge you, and we don't want to undercharge you. We want our customers to feel like they got uh, the value that we've been discussing. Um, they got what they needed, when they needed it. Um, and it met their um, expectations. And we really focus on trying to solve their problems, um, understand what they need. And sometimes we tell them, look, you don't need that. You're asking for this or that, but you really don't need it. This is what you need. But we try to work with them and, and willingness to get it done. If it's working late and working weekends uh, and redoing uh, something a little different that they want done, um, that's our job. Because at the end of the day, we want that referral. And that's that customer satisfaction. For us, it's a small industry, um, and you you can't afford to have unhappy customers. So um, that's we really work hard, to, and most of our business comes from repeat and referral business. So that usually tells us we're we're doing a pretty good job. So uh, that's where a good chunk of our uh, business comes from. We're happy to provide referrals uh, of our customers to other people. So that wraps up this video on 3D scanning uh, aircraft, helicopters, airplanes, things like that. Hopefully it was informative. If you want to talk to us more, um, you can reach us at this number or visit our website. Also check out, we've got lots of other videos that we try to go in depth and show you know, our capabilities and also just try to educate people on different applications 
um, involved in 3D scanning, reverse engineering, inspection, metrology, and so forth. 